Okay. Well, we're excited to have you guys here. We'll be letting people in as they come along. And, you know, you guys are in for a treat today with uh, with Smith. So she's going to be talking about open houses. And we were talking a little bit offline before uh, letting everybody in. She's still today, she's built her whole business, first of all, on open houses. And that's what she still does today. Obviously, you know, five and a half years into real estate has uh, referral business coming in. But beyond that, she still does open houses. So she is going to teach you. Um, she's going to teach you what she preaches. And so just let me introduce her properly a little bit about her. So um, in five and a half years, uh, in 2022, she was named the Greater Houston Realtor of the Year. In 2022, as I said, she sold over $150 million in real estate. She coaches. She's actually a success coach with EXP. She's a national speaker. She mentors a lot of real estate agents and women entrepreneurs. She is a contributor to a lot of different real estate publications. Um, and so, like I said, she's going to talk about open houses today and she still is doing this. So she's not just talking in theory. It's how she said she's built her whole entire career. Uh, and so Smita, we are excited, like I said, to have you. Th thank you so much for being here and willing to pour into everybody. And I'm going to turn this over to you. And maybe why don't you just start with uh, <clears throat> with just a little bit about your background and history, you know, up to the point of coming, how long you've been with EXP and then jump into your training. Sounds good. I am super excited to do this, guys. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you all for uh, turning on your cameras because that's important. I want to see you guys. And I love to interact. I loved questions. So please be open. Ask me as many questions as you can, and I will try to answer as many as I can. I will try to leave the last 15, 20 minutes for questions. Um, so bring it on. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Smita Singh. I am from Houston, Texas. Um, I have been an entrepreneur for <coughs> over 12 years. So I used to have two retail stores prior to coming into uh, real estate. And I also at that time used to consult women to start their own small businesses. Um, I got conned into getting into real estate because I had a couple of really good friends and they're like, no, you're going to do real estate. And I said, listen, I don't know if I don't know the difference between teal and blue. So I cannot do real estate. <laughs> and they're like, nope, you've got the skills, you can do it. And that's kind of how I got into real estate just to prove them wrong. Uh, five and a half years since I've been doing real estate, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm all about relationships. Um, I have been doing, um, it's, I mean, it, the amount that I've learned, I do. Um, I'm a champion for women entrepreneurs. I really believe that women need to get out there and uh, really do what they want to do. And I'm also a speaker. I train in EXP um, world all the time. So yeah, I just, this is, real estate is my life right now. I'm uh, starting to do a lot of commercial. Um, I've done residential for about five years. And for the past six, eight months, I've been doing a lot of commercial as well. So that's an interesting, um, you know, side to it. But uh, but yeah, that's what I do daily. I come to, by the way, a uh, few things I come to, I'm going to go turn my light on really quick. Give me one second. Sorry, guys. Okay. Way better. Um, I totally believe in commitment. I come to my office every day. I'm here. Um, and like, and Kathy and I were talking, it's all about commitment showing up because the more you show up, the more you can succeed. And I think my light is not doing good, right? The the lighting is not good. Let me turn it off. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm back. So shall we get started? Questions? Any questions before we get started? No. Okay. I'm going to share with you today. Let me share my screen really quick. Um, all about open houses. So I have been doing, when I got into real estate, I had a, um, it, I've been in Houston for a long time. So I've had a very, very wide sphere. But when I got into real estate, I did not want to reach out to people because I had imposter syndrome. And I felt like, why would anybody want to work with me when I have just started doing real estate? So for the longest time, I did not reach out to my sphere. And what I wanted to do was prove to myself that I can do real estate and I would get all of these cold leads, convert them, 
and be able to get a, a buyer strip signed, which is very important now, and eventually be able to do a transaction with them and have a relationship. So I will go through my whole process of open houses. Let me share this with you. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Kathy, can you? Okay, yep. awesome. Awesome. Let me do this. If it works. Okay. And y'all can still see it. Wonderful. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is, first of all, um, why open houses is a fantastic lead generation pillar. We're going to talk about the art of procuring desirable listings to host your open houses. We're going to talk about the roadmap of an effective open house and, of course, nurturing leads beyond the open house. Um, go ahead. Sorry. All right. So that's a little bit about me. We went through this. We're going to go ahead to the next step. So if you're going to take anything out of this training, it is this, which is your biggest mindset shift. You are not there to sell the home. Your objective is to build your pipeline. So a lot of times when people, can you, thank you. Sorry. A lot of times when people are out there doing open houses, they are out there to sell homes, right? Even if it's your listing or you're doing an open house for somebody else, our whole concept is, oh, I'm going to go there. I need to know everything I need I can about this particular home. I need to know what square footage, what lot size, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Yes, that's great. But if there is one thing, one mindset shift that you're going to have today, which is when you walk into that open house, your goal is to have conversations. Your goal is to build a pipeline. That is your goal. Your goal is not to sell the home because really how many people will walk into an open house and give you an offer right then and there, right? So as soon as you shift that mindset, your preparation of going into that open house, your talking, your scripts, your conversations with people, your follow-ups with people will completely change. Um, so always remember, if there's one thing you're going to take is I want to build my pipeline, I'm going to do open houses. Let's talk about this. Okay, so open houses, which I say your gateway to real estate success, I have built my book of business through open houses. Um, and as Kathy had mentioned, we were talking about it today. I mean, I've been doing real estate for five years. I get a lot of referrals, but I still will go and do open houses because I want new business. I am not a cold caller. Like I will not pick up the phone and cold call people. That's just not me. I'm not saying it doesn't work for people. It works amazingly well for a lot of different people. But in the five years that I have been doing real estate, I have figured out what my best pillars of lead generation are. And my one of the best ones is open house. The first reason why I love open houses is one, because it is a no or a low cost investment. All that is required is your time and effort. When I do open houses and I, guys, I've done like in a year, I probably, I mean, every, almost every weekend I will do an open house. I do not buy cookies. I do not buy like an elaborate stuff. I will only go there with water bottles. That's all I'm taking. And all it takes is my two to three hours. I have certain set timings that I've figured out that works best in my area and that's all I do. It is my time and my effort. And I'll go through my exact process. I'll, I'll, that's the meat and potatoes of it. So we'll go through that. But this is the most no or low cost investment lead generation pillar. Today, if you don't have enough new business, you need to start doing open houses every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, every weekend. That's what you need to do. Um, highly motivated leads. Think about it. How many people will get up from their homes in Houston? It's freaking hot. How many of them will get up, get into their car and go out to open houses? These are motivated leads. These are people that are ready to buy in the next six to eight months. On Sundays, they're done with church. They're coming out to open houses. These are not your Facebook ad leads. They're not, oh, I'm going to go through Facebook and, oh, I like this. Let me click on it and kind of figure out what I want to do. 
These are super highly motivated. These motivated leads are yours to convert. I mean, and they're coming to you. So think about it. This is one of the lead pillars where you will get the most highly motivated leads. And if you're not doing it, you better start doing it. Um, the third thing is it is the most effective way for exposure, visibility, and brand building. I will share with you again when I when I go through the whole process, you'll see why I say that. But this is the most important thing at the moment. Um, when I do open houses, and I'll share with you exactly how to do it, which areas, all of that stuff. But when I do open houses, everybody knows me. People will see my signs. I put up a ton of signs. People see my signs and they walk into my open house and they'll tell me, oh, my daughter recognized you from your sign. I will walk into a grocery store and they'll say, oh, yeah, I saw that you were doing an open house this past weekend. This is fantastic for exposure. If you want to be the authority in your particular community, you have to do open houses as well as visibility. The more open houses that you do, I like I said, I do it every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. The more open houses that you do, people think you're busy because they, they see you there, you're out and about, they see that you're working. It's also a great way to build your brand. And the fourth thing is client engagement. Think about it. All of these highly motivated leads are walking into your open house. This is your chance to demonstrate your authority to them. You are not selling a house. You are there to build a relationship with them. I've had, I can't even count how many times when I talk to people, I will have them sign a buyer's rep right then and there. And now it's becoming more and more important, right? I did it five years ago, um, getting a buyer's rep signed. The most important thing is to have a meaningful conversation, a meaningful engagement with them. We'll do a quick role play if you'd like, and I'll share with you how I do it. But these are the most important things. You're going in there, you're going to take advantage or leverage these highly motivated leads that are coming in. Open houses are a great way for exposure, visibility, and brand building. And it is the most easiest way to demonstrate your authority to these people that are walking in. All right, so let's talk about the art of procuring desirable listings to your open house. Um, I'm gonna go through each one of these, but I'm also gonna share with you what I did and how I did it. Um, so the first is to pick an area and a price range. Now, when you are, uh, how many of you are maybe just starting out or have been doing business for a long time, but are looking to grow in a newer area? Awesome, awesome. So when you start doing open houses, do not do them blindly. Don't just say, okay, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to start doing an open house and I'm going to do an open house everywhere across the city. That is not strategic. So the first thing you're going to do is sit down and do a little bit of homework, right? The first thing you're going to do is figure out what are your top two. And I, I just want to say top two. I'm not even going to say three. What are your top two areas? or communities that you want to become an authority at, where you want to have listings, where you want to have buyers, where you feel like, okay, I envision myself in the next three years, I'm going to be the go-to person for real estate in this area. So pick your first top two areas. The number two is very important to pick your price range, right? Again, a lot of times if we start doing this stuff blindly, you'll go to um, a $300,000 home. You'll go to a $150,000 home. I was very intentional about this. I'm very, when I started picking my areas, I said, I want to do business only in the homes or areas that have homes that are over 700K and over. So whatever it is, whatever that area, whatever that number price range is for you, that is that you feel is workable, pick it. Because the more intentional you are about the area and price range, and the more time and effort you're putting into it, it's going to blow up, right? So it's very, very important to do this step. 
If you do not do this step, you will not see consistent results happening over time. So first thing is to pick your area, and second is to pick your price range. Now, you've sat down and you've gone through your, your communities and you've said, okay, these are the top two areas that I'm going to pick, and this is the price range that I want to pick in. You may or may not have listings, and that's totally fine. I'll share with you how to do that. Um, I can't see all of you, but I'm hoping, let me see if I can see this. Okay, how many of you have new construction happening in your area? Okay, some of you, a lot of you. Okay, um, I wanna talk about new construction as well. Um, wherever you have new construction going on in your areas or community, it is a fantastic opportunity for you to target that area. And when I talk about new construction inventory homes, once you've picked your community and your price range, go out to all your builders and start talking to them and have conversations with them. A lot of times these builders have inventory homes that are sitting on their, um, on their lots and they need somebody to go out and do open houses. So when you're procuring, one of the ways to start looking at these areas is to go out and talk to builder salespeople, have a relationship with them, and start doing open houses for their inventory homes. So we're talking about resale. We're also talking about inventory because it's important, new construction inventory, because it's important to capitalize on both. And I'll share with you how it works when you put those two together. But it's very, very important, um, especially, like I said, if you all have new construction, go and build a relationship with your builder salespeople and offer to them, just tell them, hey, I would love to do an open house for your inventory home that's sitting out over there. Guys, I've done uh, open houses for builder salespeople for um, inventory that didn't even have flooring on it in the house. There is like, it's half done, it's ready to go, but I want it to be there. Because think about it, how many people show up to model homes? Especially if it's a new construction area, there's gonna be a model park. How many people show up there? And when they see your signs, it's brand building, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's very, if there is new construction going on around you, it's a great opportunity to find inventory homes to do open houses on. Now, if you're looking only at resale homes, you guys have a huge network, right? There are so many of you in your group. This is a great way to reach out to your counterparts, other real estate agents within EXP to find out what listings they have. Guys, a listing agent will not be able to do open houses both days. Even if they do open houses both days, they are not gonna sit there for six hours. You could do two open houses on the same day. Say if the listing agent does it from three to six, you do it from 10 to 12, or you do it from 12, uh, 10 to one. There is an opportunity if there is a listing out there. This is a, And again, I love EXP for this because you can reach out to any EXP agent and ask them, hey, I would love to do an open house for your listing. Would you be open to it? Let me know what time um, is available or I can do it. I'm flexible. Tell me what time you'd like me to do it. I've had so many people call me for my listings and it is sometimes I'm like, yes, please do it. It is so far away from my house. I don't want to go. Please do it for me. And these people keep in touch with me. So it's very, very important to build that rapport, that relationship with your other EXP agents. Because once you're on their radar, especially if there are people that have a lot, lot of listings, they will reach out to you. Smaller teams, they could have 10, 12 listings, but not as many agents. And they're looking for people to do open houses for. So this is a great opportunity for you to reach out to them build a rapport with them on a consistent basis and reach out to a few that you really like and know and trust. Because once you start reaching out to them, they will start reaching out back to you. Like I will text people and say, hey, I have a listing coming up. Do you want to do an open house next weekend? Because I can do it. And you've been doing open houses for me. I, I know you. I like you. I trust you. I would love for you to do an open house for me. So I'll go back and, and reiterate this. The first important strategic intentional step is to pick an area and pick a price range. Because eventually when you start consistently working 
you start, start consistently putting your effort into it, you will see that your price range will keep increasing and that's where you want to be, right? Um, if you have new construction around in your area, getting an open house opportunity in an inventory home is uh, is low hanging fruit, literally, because you can go to them. The builder salesperson does not do open houses, but a lot of builders do allow open houses. So this is a fantastic way to get out there and do open houses. Um, and then, of course, reach out to every listing agent in your area. Build a rapport, build a relationship with people in the areas that you have picked so that you could do open houses for them. Guys, any questions coming up? Okay, I'm just going to keep going and then maybe we'll leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. Yes, okay. Sounds good. Um, okay, now let's talk meat and potatoes, right? Let's talk about how to do an effective open house. So, you have decided that your top two areas are whatever you've picked, right? Let's talk about open house signs. Now I've decided, okay, Smitha, these are going to be my top two areas that I'm going to do open houses. This is my price range. I have reached out to every new construction builder salesperson. And actually I'll talk about both just so y'all have a little bit of um, insight into both. Um, and or you've reached out to a listing agent and you've procured a listing to do an open house this next weekend. Let's talk about open house signs. This is the most important thing because I cannot tell you how many people have seen my signs and have walked into my open house. When I talk about open house signs, I'm talking about 30, 35 open house signs. That's how many I put out, right? I will put one out at every intersection leading up to that home. I will put out four or five signs at every major intersection. I will put directional signs. I have two signs, one that is straight and one that's uh, a directional sign. I have my face on every sign because it is brand recognition. I want people to be able to see me and know that, hey, this is this is Smitha. Even if they don't walk into my open house, they know I'm around in the area, right? It is important for you to put out as many signs as you can. If you have five signs, guys, please go and order 20 more signs. The more signs that you have out there, have I lost signs? Absolutely. Have my signs been picked up by um, master plan communities, the people that are in their trucks and they'll just pick up my signs? Yes. But you know what? That is advertising, free advertising on a Saturday and Sunday that is out there for anybody and everybody to see when they are driving. And my face is plastered on it. So I will put out before my open house. So say, so I like to do my open houses on Saturday and Sunday between um, three to five. I do two hours now. I used to do three hours before. I do what I do two hours. If my open house starts at three o'clock, my signs are out there at 12. It's out there. Like I will go out there and now I pay somebody to put my signs up. But guys, I have been out there for years and years putting my signs up. And it's even amazing. It's it's fun because sometimes when I'm putting my signs up, people that I know will drive past me and they'll beep at me. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? So this all of this is brand building. All of this is visibility. So if I start my open house at three o'clock, my signs are out there by Sometimes 10 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock. I remove them as soon as my open house is done, but they're out there way ahead of time. So all of these people that are driving by, they see that my signs are out there. Um, and then, of course, I'm not doing an open house until three o'clock. I will put a sign in front of the door of wherever that house is to say open house at such and such time. If you would like to see it at a different time, please call me. This is my phone number. Right. So. It's done. It's covered. Um, now let's talk about authority. So my open house signs are out there. For me, the communities that I have picked have new construction homes close by or they have recent homes. So there's a bit of both. Remember what I told you, when people walk in, when these motivated leads are walking in, it is important for you to demonstrate your authority. And the way I'm going to do that is by knowing everything that's going on in and around the neighborhood that I've picked. I will go and do what I call build arounds, which is say a day prior. So if I'm doing an open house on a Saturday or a Sunday, I will go on a Friday or a Thursday and go and meet with 
every builder salesperson in the area around where the house is that I'm doing an open house. I will go build a relationship with them. I will go bring all their floor plans, figure out what their inventory is right now, what their price sheets are, what their floor plans are. I will know everything because what happens is when somebody walks into my open house, again, let's go back to it. I am there to build my pipeline. I am there to demonstrate my authority. So when they're walking in, I'm going to have the most intelligent conversation I can by providing them value about what they're looking for. And the only way that I can do that is to know exactly what's happening around me. So this is this step is very important for you, especially if you have new construction. If you don't have new construction, is the next part is where you say it's your or where you have to become an area expert. When I started doing open houses in a particular community, I was on their PTO, I was in their rezoning uh, committees, I was involved in that area just so I would know everything that I can about it. If you don't have the time or you're not involved in it, it's okay. But it's important for you to educate yourself, talk to as many people as you can, and understand what's happening in those areas. Some of the areas around me was there was two years where there was a lot of rezoning of schools happening. So what I did was I really got into it. I figured out what these schools are, what are the demographics, why is this rated such and such? Why is this school important? When it gets rezoned, what's going to happen? When people walked in, I was the authority. People knew to ask me questions because I knew what was going to happen six months down the road. I knew what was going to happen one year down the road. So it's very important for you to be authentic by learning everything that you can around in the area. Because that's when you start when you start talking and having those conversations, you can talk very confidently and tell them exactly what's happening. And when homeowners are, are prospective homeowners are walking in, what is it that they want? They want to know everything about the area. They want to know stuff that is not on a website, right? They want to know stuff that's not on the MLS. And the only way that you could do it is if you know it yourself. So when people walk in, so I have picked my areas. I have done my build around. So I know exactly what's happening in the area. Um, I've put up my open house signs about two to three hours ahead of my open house. Now, when people are walking in, I am not there to sell the home. Guys, a lot of times, and I'm telling you this, this sounds like <laughs> super frivolous, but a lot of times I, before, if I'm doing a, uh, an open house for somebody else's listing, like literally 30 minutes before, I'm looking at the MLS to figure out what the home is. Because I can go out there, I can go into a home, walk in in two minutes, and I know exactly what's important in that house, right? That is not my objective. My objective is to build a connection with people that are walking in. So now, when people are walking into my open house, maybe they've seen it, seen that it's there's an MLS on the open house. Maybe they're seeing my sign and they're walking in. I am not there to sell the home. So I my conversations with them are about them. So when they walk in, the first thing I'll say, hey, what brings you out here looking for a home? Simple. I'm not going to tell them, oh, let me show you the house. Do you mind if I give you a tour? Mm, no, thank you. I will go take a tour myself, right? I am not. The only reason I'm there is to get to know them and see how I can add value to them. So as soon as I start, that's my that's what I start with. And I say, hey, what brings you out here looking for a home? So they'll start talking to me now and they'll start saying, hey, yeah, we're looking in this area. How did you decide to pick this area? What made you pick this area? Are you new to this area? Are you moving to this area? What's going on? How many kids do you have? Do you know about the schools? Would you like to know about the schools? I am just having a conversation with them about what their needs are. Trust me, a lot of times people have walked in. I will have 10 to 15 minute conversation with them and I'll literally tell them, you know what, this house is not for you, but I know exactly which house is going to work for you. Let me get your information and I will call you as soon as I'm done from here. Simple, because I know what their needs are. As real estate agents, that's the value that we're bringing to them. Once we know what their needs are, we're able to match them up with all these different opportunities that are out there. Now, if you don't know these opportunities that are out there, how are you going to match them up? 
again, going back, and I know I, I keep repeating myself, but you are not there to sell the home, guys. You are there to build a connection with them. So they'll walk in and I'll say to them, hey, what brings you out here looking for a home? And they're talking to me. They're telling me about their whole history, why they're thinking about this area. And as they're talking to me and as they're giving me their information, I am writing it down. I will put pull out, I have whatever paper, whatever y'all use. I will start writing information down. I will take their name and say, okay, well, tell me, tell me what your name is. How old are your kids? All of this stuff. I have not asked them to sign in. I have not asked them to go through the home yet, right? I'm showing that I'm here listening to what they need. Because once they start telling me all this stuff, now what is happening? They're having a conversation with me and they're starting to like me now a little bit more because I'm giving them value. They're starting to trust me because now what I'm telling them is, hey, you wanted two bedrooms down. This particular home does not have two bedrooms down. I know it's not going to work for you. You're welcome to go look around. But you know what? I have two homes in my mind right now that will work perfectly for you. So this is, again, I'm not faking it. I know exactly what's going on in the area. I am the authority and I am helping them out with what they need. I am giving them value that nobody else is able to provide when they walk into open houses, right? So get to know them and get to know their needs. It is important for you to be the authority. So this is when I talk about all it takes to do open houses is your time and effort and not uh, it's the lowest cost investment. This is your time and effort that you are pouring into the area to get to know it. Now, when they're walking in, my objective for them is to get a buyer consultation appointment. That's it. That's all I want from them. So when they're walking in and I've had a great conversation with them for about 10 to 15 minutes, I've demonstrated to them that I am the authority. I know what they're looking for and I have options about what they're looking for. I am going to take their name and phone number right then and there. I don't have them write it down. I will save it on my phone. I send them a text message right then and there. What is this doing? It's weeding away all the bogus, bogus phone numbers that come into your list, right? When people walk into your open house, they're putting whatever, they're writing whatever. No, I'm not going to waste time. I have very limited time and I'm going to make it as effective as I can, right? So when they come in, I will take their name and phone number right then and there. I will text them instantly and I will say, great, how about let's meet tomorrow or let's have a Zoom call. So my buyer consultation most of the time will happen on a Zoom call. A lot of times they will start talking to me and I'll share with you uh, pocket listings, but they will start talking to me. And most of them, they're like, oh, can we go see this home right now? I'm like, not right now because I'm in an open house. I have to be here. And typically when I do three to five, by the time I get out of there, it's six o'clock and then it's a little bit too late. So my goal is to tell them that, hey, I would love to show you show you that home, but it is, it is important for us to sit down and talk a little bit more so I can show you other opportunities that are available other than the ones that I have shared with you right now. Why do they want to have a buyer consultation with you when they don't see any value, right? So you need to be able to um, share with them that, hey, you know what? I talked about these two homes, but I have others that are sitting in my pocket right now. So I would love to share them with you, but I will share them with you on our next Zoom call. So you let me know when are you available. I can do tomorrow morning or I can do on Monday in the evening. Simple. Right then and there, you're making an appointment for a Zoom call for a buyer consultation. Um, I started doing Zoom calls. Actually, I'm going to go back to more in-person now because um, of the new rules and all of that stuff. But this is a great way for them to come into your office and have a conversation with you or go to a coffee shop and have a conversation with you. So let me recap. You're finding your strategic area, very intentional about it. You're picking the price point that you want to work with for the next two, three years. You're picking, you're getting, procuring the listing, be it a new construction inventory home or a resale home to do an open house. Prior to doing it, you're going to go around in the area and do your due diligence. You're going to go do your homework. You're going to become the expert and the authority of that area. 
your visibility comes when you put out 30 open house signs. I put out as many signs as you can, make sure your face is on it. Just a name, phone number is not going to cut it. They will not remember you. Put a face on it, they will remember you. Make sure you do build arounds and you get all the information there is. I have spent hours and hours pouring over floor plans, pouring over inventory homes, the uh, uh, incentives that are coming up with builders. These are important for you to know because when somebody walks in and they're telling you, oh, I'm looking to move in the next six months and they're here in a resale home, this is a great opportunity for me to convert them into a new construction buyer instead of letting them go to say, oh, okay, six months. Well, you can start looking in three months, right? So this is an opportunity. You have to figure out when they're walking in, how am I going to build a connection with them? What am I going to say to them that gets them excited, that gets them to understand that I am the authority in that area? And my objective is to get a buyer consultation appointment. Oof. Okay. Are we good on time? Good. 1038. I'm going to make this quick so we can take some questions. Um, this is what I call the VAB formula for open houses. If you can remember this, and any action that you do has these three things, your open houses are going to be fantastic. Number one is visibility. Put it out there. And when I'm talking about visibility, guys, I haven't gotten to social media yet. So we're not going to talk about social media. When I'm talking about visibility, I'm talking about in the area visibility through your signs. Simple. I have done open houses in a community literally every weekend, Saturday and Sunday for a whole year. Think about it. Every weekend, people in these communities are seeing my face. I mean, they know me, right? Next is authority. Do your homework because when you do your homework and you're standing there, you are the authority of that area. And you're able to confidently demonstrate that to these people that are coming in. And of course, the last is brand building which has all of this together because they're seeing your signs, they're walking in and they see you and they're like, okay, well, tell me more. These are my needs. They're going to tell you their whole life story and you're going to be able to find them something that is not over there or not convenient. Let me say that, not that particular home. If it's another home, that's great, but you're going to get them to start working with you. All right, let's talk about social media now, right? We're... Um, it's all about social media. So the way I, um, I was trying to put this in a video, but for some reason it didn't work. I will do a video at every open house that I do. I don't post on my social media prior that there's an open house going on because really to me, how many people are gonna, really gonna see it and come into this home, right? Instead, what I'm using social media for is to build my brand, is to give them a carriage to say, oh, hey, look, there's something. If you're interested, reach out to me. I'll share with you a few things here that are key, right? So I will do an open house video, every open house that I do. I do it very casually with my phone. I'm talking into my phone and I'm walking around the house. I will make sure that I do it either prior to people walking in or after. It depends on how much traffic I have. By the way, um, I forgot to mention one more thing. I hate open houses that have 15 to 20 people show up. A lot of people tell me, oh my God, how was your open house? Did you have a lot of people come? I don't want open houses that have a lot of people. I literally want five to six people and have solid conversations with five to six people and convert freaking four of them. That's what I want. If I can get four buyer reps out of one open house, that is a fantastic open house for me. And if five people walk in or are converted, that's what I care about. That is an efficient use of my time. If 15 people are walking into my open house, I can have half-baked conversations with 10 of them. I mean, by the end of it, okay, yeah, sure. But really, was it effective, right? So, um, so social media... When I am doing social media, I will go out and do a video. I will never put the address on social media. I don't want to put the address because I want them to call me or message me. And a lot of times I will only put the key aspects 
when I'm doing the video, I talk about one feature in the home that is that has appealed to me. And a lot of times I'm telling you, people, even my friends will reach out to me and be like, oh my gosh, I was waiting on that thing. I was, when you told me about the swing in the backyard, oh yeah, that was amazing. So they are waiting to hear what is important, what struck my fancy in that house. And that's how I do it. I will not talk about the address because I want them to reach out to me. I only give very specific, and you'll see like it's half, like six bedrooms, 6.5 bad, 2.9 million pool. Call me today. Simple. If you're looking in that area, the first one says memorial. If you're looking in the memorial area and you're interested in a six bedroom home, you will call me. And all I want to do is when you call me is have a conversation with you, right? That is what I'm looking for. So my, um, my uh, videos, I will do it every time I do an open house. I talk about one feature that has appealed to me the most. I do a quick video of the home as I'm talking. Um, I will not give out the address because I want them to call me. And of course, it has my information how to reach out. All right. And I've had so many people reach out to me on social media. Like, oh, uh, Smita, what home was that? And I'm like, tell me a little bit more. What are you interested in? That's a great conversation starter, right? I don't have to send them the address immediately. All I want them to do is reach out to me. And now I'm going to start a conversation with you to figure out what you're wanting. Um, anybody that texts me and says, oh, um, I was interested in that home. That home looked amazing. Are you looking in that area? What other areas are you looking in? Again, conversations. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, so you've done your intentional open house. You've done your open house signs. You've done your homework. You've gotten a buyer consultation or not. A lot of times, some people might be like, yeah, sure, I'm interested, but let me get back to you. Sure, make sure you get, your in get, the get their information. Every open house, Prior to leaving the open house, I will spend 30 minutes and send personalized videos to everybody that has walked in. Again, guys, I am I have two boys now, 15 and 13. I have five million things that are happening in my life. I have I make everything as easy and efficient and scalable as I can. Now, if I go back and then I think, okay, I'm gonna do this later, I'm gonna do this, it's never gonna happen. So I will spend the extra 30 minutes right after the open house, sit there. I have all these people's information, phone numbers. I will spend, I will send a quick video right then and there. You can use whatever you want. There's bomb bomb. I just do it on the phone. Um, and I will tell them, hey, it was great meeting, uh, great meeting you today at my open house. Da, 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 da. And I know, and I always take notes. So I'll say, okay, I know y'all, your kids are in elementary school and you're looking in this area. I have a couple of more options available for you. I'd love to show it to you at this and this time. Or you told me that you're looking for a two-bedroom home, but at this, this is a square feet. So what I'm going to do is when I'm doing this, I'm demonstrating to them that I was listening to their needs. And I'm understanding what they're looking for. And you know what? You're on top of my mind because I have something that I thought about for you. Simple, right? So a lot of times when I do these personalized videos, people will respond back immediately and they're like, okay, yeah, let's let's meet up. Guys, everybody is curious. Everybody wants to know, oh, what is it that you have that people don't have, right? So if you tell them that I have something, this is a great way. Now I'll share with you one tip. Y'all have such a big group of people. Um, this is a great way. And I know we have our new... Um, uh, I'm forgetting the name uh, of having a brain freeze, but EXP did the pocket listing uh, website. Now use that to your benefit. These listings and talk to your people around you. Figure out the listings that they're working on. These are great hooks for you to share with the people that are coming in to get them to meet with you. If you have a listing agent that you work with constantly on a constant basis, and you know that they have a listing coming up, get the specifics. And when people are walking in and just say, hey, you know what? This home is not on the market yet, but I know it's coming up. Let me see if I can try to get a private showing for you. Simple. Who would not want to work with you? Right? Or at least get to know what that private showing is. And what you do is get your buyer's rep signed. Okay. 
So make a personalized video on the day of at the open house. Um, on Monday, you email them home. Okay, guys, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to make this quick. So I've laid out some Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. This is kind of what I do. Um, I'll e email them about homes that are coming soon, not on the market. Um, I'll ask them if they're interested. A lot of times I just do it mostly on text message, sometimes on an email. And if they haven't responded by Thursday, that's okay. Just put them on your drip campaign. Okay. Um, this is your homework, guys. I'm giving you homework for this weekend. So pick an area. This is important. Call the agents to get an open house for this weekend. Today is Tuesday. You can do it. Get an open house secured by Thursday and have at least five conversations. This is super important. And that is the name of the game. Okay. I know I went like super quick. Let me stop sharing. Okay, questions, guys. Great stuff. Um, so, Kimberly, you had a question in the chat. Do you want to unmind? Sorry, I didn't see the chat. Oh, that's okay. Me? Well, you had a question about just putting your face on the sign. So, obviously, do you, you know, feel like that's okay? I mean, you know, it's part of branding, obviously, right? You know, if we're on social right. media and we're on all these places, they're seeing our face. Um, but what do you do for safety perspectives, uh, Smith, to, at your open houses? Uh, that's a great right. question. I've had so far one incident where I did not feel safe. But outside of that, um, see, when I put it on social media, like I said, I don't put the address on, right? So people that are on social media, they don't even know where I am. And typically, like I said, even when I do the video, I don't put the address on. Um, most of the time when I do open houses, I will have at least one or two people. Sometimes if I feel like, okay, I'm not feeling too safe, I will leave the front door open or I'm standing right next to the front door. Like that's, and I'm telling you in the five years that I've done it, it has happened to me once where I did not feel safe. Um, there were like three men that walked in. I'm like, okay, this is not this thing. So I just literally went to the front door. I opened it and I was standing right at the front door. Yeah. Great tip. Great tip. Thank you. Do you have yeah. a lender there with you? Um, when you're doing these, no, of course you're I in million want, dollar properties. I don't want anybody. Honestly, I've done like $3 million, 3.5. I don't want anybody because the reason is that I want to have that conversation with my people with these people okay. that are walking in. I am building my um, authority, my relationship with them, right? And and I want them to see what I know. I want them to understand that, hey, I'm, it's, I know everything about this area. So no, I actually don't do it with anybody. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of questions about the signs. On your pointer signs, are they are they branded number one? What do you pay somebody to put them out, pick them back up, and then where do you like where are they picking them up from and storing them? Um, so I I store them at my house. I literally will have college kids, and now I just have one or two of them that I know they're college kids, and I pay them fifteen dollars. Um, thirty dollars to just go put up all my signs, and they'll take it out. Tell them where you want them, or do you just say, "Hey, yes. put them on every So, major. so it took a little bit of practice. So I would print out a map, and I would like I would put dots exactly where I wanted it. I've been through all of that. Now I've trained them enough that they're like, "Yeah, you know, Miss Smith, we know where to go." So, yeah. but yes, it is very important. Like I said, every intersection, I will put two or three. Once they're done with the intersection, I'll put the straight sign because now they know they're going that way. So it is so important. The maximum number of signs that you can put out, it's great. And do you brand your pointers? Yes. They have my name on it. They have EXP. Yes. So they're branded. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know, Sean Corbett made a great point in the, um, in the comment box. And Sean, if you want to say anything additionally, but he made a great comment that, you know, with this new change that's happening starting this weekend, there's going to be some buyers who don't want to sign a buyer rep. And so people are going to be coming out to open houses and sort of doing a lot of their own browsing. So, mm -hmm. you know, his comment was, we're probably going to see an increase in people showing up to open houses, you know, partly because of that. So um, Sean, anything you want to add to that? Sure. No, Kathy, you're Exactly right. I mean, that's, you know, I, I do have Zillow for my team and I provide them Zillow leads. 
And they're starting to become that challenge where we're not supposed to be showing people property without buyer reps in place. Well, Zillow is a lot of tire kickers, right? And so is our open house. I mean, reality, there are a lot of tire kickers. I always think of open house is like having a free Zillow because it creates an opportunity for us to make a connection with someone. And, and you know, Smita, I think your biggest point is I'm not looking for volume. I'm looking for connection. Exactly. If you spend some time with me, you're going to hire me. Yes. And I have the exact same, you know, philosophy when I do any of these type of things. If I have a conversation with you, I'm going to offer more than anyone else will. You're going to hire me because we have a relationship and I'm going to solve your real estate problem. So open houses for you guys out there that have grown up in, in, in your past open houses. Well, the reality is this creates an opportunity for you to go back and get some clean, easy opportunities again, you know, because they're not going to schedule through Zillow because we can't take them. So yeah. really good point. Um, I'll do a couple of uh, things that you said. Promoting open houses, you do videos when you go to your open house and you don't use it for open house promotion where everybody else does. I think that's ingenious, right? So, you know, making good use of your time. I'm going to be there for a few hours. I tell my agents, always bring your laptop, you know, be planning other things. I, I When we had times where we could do these long-term like broker opens, I was like, man, go sit on a house on a Thursday in the afternoon for three hours and just open it and, and keep making your phone calls, you know, keep working. It's, it's a work time. If it's slow, you didn't lose any opportunity because you're still working. Um, yeah. I think making that video and creating a social media connection through it without using it to promote the open house. I'd never thought about it that way. That's a great idea. Um, and then last thing is just a tip to kind of throw in there. Um, I always make connection commitments when I have conversations with people, right? So I don't do sign-in forms either. I do a lot of the similar things that you do. I want to build a, a relationship with them. And while I'm talking to them, I'm going to text them what they're looking for right back to them so I can hear the ding. Yeah. And I know that we're talking and we know we have exactly. made a connection. Yep. But yep. I also tell them, you know, as a courtesy, so you don't have to remember everything, I'm going to send you... X, Y, Z, whatever it is. I'm going to send you the webpage on this website. Listing reports has a good webpage you can use. You guys all have list reports, cheap, free. KV Core probably has one built in their listing machine. Um, or it, it could be, um, oh, I'm going to send you the video walkthrough you just created on your social media. Why couldn't you send that to them as well? Just as a follow-up, say, hey, you don't have to remember everything. Here's the video walkthrough. I'll give you a link. So when you do that, it gives permission for you to have text communication. Yeah. That is unbelievably powerful. That's how I can, that's how I close a lot of the people that I communicate with on open houses. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, Sean's one of the, one of our icon agents have, too. So he does, you know, a lot of great. So Mike, I see you're on Mike. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask him. So of course, open houses serve the agent better than the, the seller. Uh, it kind of works that way. It's for their benefit in most cases, the way they feel about the property, hey, it needs to be promoted. Um, so I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, most sellers, they want to see the traffic. Mm -hmm. They want to see the traffic. The more traffic, the better. And so I, I definitely see where obviously having a lot less people come through is going to give you those relationships and the open house starts to work as the agent really needs it to for themselves yes so, so i'll share you, with you sorry go ahead sorry mike go ahead i was gonna say so do you ever i'm I'm sure you do have a seller that goes well we only had like you know four or five people come through and for you you're like heck yeah i made conversations oh, i got the leads i got whatever and you're smiling but they're like well i don't really know it you know all that advertisement yeah. So, so I'll share with you. Yeah, 100%. So I tell you, I will almost always sell the home prior to it hits the market. And I, it's also because of open houses. I have a list of people that are looking and I know exactly what they're looking for. That is my USB for listing because I will tell them, hey, I understand we're getting get, getting your home ready for listing in the next one month, but I'm going to show this home as a pocket listing for people that I know that are in the market. I have buyer reps with these people and I will show them these homes prior to it hitting the market. And I mean, I've sold homes, 
even before it hits the market. I've sold homes like it's uh, it it got listed and it's like within 10 hours it's gone, right? It's because all these people that have walked into my open house, they are in my database. I know exactly what they're looking for. And when they're there, I can tell them this is coming up. I'm able to show it. At the end of the day, the seller wants, I mean, I'm telling you, I've sold them prior to them coming on the market. And then I want to do an open house because I want to get more people. So then I tell the seller, listen, I know it's already under contract, but let me go in and do an open house. So it works both ways. I think it's all about leveraging what we have. And if we have a list of these people that are looking and we have a listing that's out there or we know it's coming, it's a great way to show your value to both sides, right? To the buyer, hey, it's not in the market yet. Let me show it to you. To your seller, hey, we have not listed yet, but look at me. I'm a rock star. I can bring five people in even before it gets on the market. So again, if it sells or doesn't sell, it doesn't matter. But I'm doing something different than other agents that are putting it on the market and then doing open houses, right? So so yes, you're right. That is an aspect. But then I'm also showing them value in other ways that, hey, I'm able to bring you five people even before it hits the market kind of a thing. So, but yeah, I've had, um, uh yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's about, uh, and I and I think that's one of the things that is key is where you pick your area, right? If if that area that you've picked is, um, you know, high volume, high price point, there's going to be constant number of people that are coming through because it's a highly desirable area. So I think that kind of plays into it as well. Does that kind of answer your question, Mike? It does. Thank you. Okay. So what do you do if question if you have multiple groups come in at the same time? How are you? Yeah, trying it to happens build all the time. Yeah, it happens all the time. I will try to um if I'm having a conversation with somebody already, I will finish that conversation. I don't want to leave them and be like, oh, okay, well, too bad now I'm going. But if I'm not able to somebody's walking in or somebody has walked in already and I'm having a serious conversation with them. But now they've seen the house. I haven't had a time to interact with them and they're about to leave. I will make sure that they sign in. So I will tell them, hey, the people that are that are walking, I would say, hey, do you mind give me two minutes? Do I want to go walk through the home? Let me go say hello to them. So I will go say hi. And then again, it depends on what kind of conversation, but it has happened before. But I will make sure that they're signed in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, it's just that dance that we get to, you know, where if there's multiple people coming in, it's, yes. you know, you don't want to stop a conversation you're in the middle of. Yes. But, and also, so. it depends on how, how, I, and you can get a feel of it, right? Like, if you're yeah. feeling like, okay, I'm feeling this, like, they're feeling me right now, yeah. I don't want yeah. to get off it. I'm going to be like, I'm right here with you. Let me keep having this conversation because that's a maybe you're like almost there. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's I what I was going to say. If like, yeah. If there's two or three coming in literally at the same time and you're not in a conversation with any, whichever one, you know, seems to be engaging, you know, because obviously you're going to address them all as they're coming in, you know, hey, great, welcome. You know, the one that speaks and acts like they're going to, you know, be open to conversation is probably who I'm going to migrate to, you know. Right, and right. And ask a lot of questions. The more questions you ask, the more open they are, the more like they start telling your whole story, like you'll get to know about their grandmother and their grandkids, like everything, right? Um, and then the other thing, I know Sean, I don't know if he's here or not, he had mentioned, uh, you know, to be on your computer and this thing. I've done that, but I think a lot of, like sometimes I'll walk into open houses, right? Um, and a lot of agents tend to be distracted, like they're doing something or they're, you know, they're, they're not as into it and it shows. So, yes, I mean, do that by all means when people are not there. But like when people start walking, don't finish what you're doing on the computer, like get up and start talking to them. Yeah. You know, I mean, these are like small yeah. nuances, but they make a big difference. <laughs> well, and maybe even position yourself so you can see, you know, in a exactly. room. Who's about to walk in them coming in so you can shut your computer and be standing up and ready to yeah. greet them. Or, yeah. you know, it is those small things that make such big differences. It does. And I'll tell you another like super, 
I mean, it, it, it sounds very insignificant, but I don't sit at my open houses. I'm always standing. Yeah. Because to me, I'm like, I want to be, as soon as somebody's walking in, as soon as somebody, I want to show them that I'm here, right? If I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to get up. And then, I, no, I'm like, listen, I'm here. You tell me what you need. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. It's such great tips. And, you know, as she talked about, this is a free way. And as Sean mentioned, and we talked a little bit about, there's going to be a lot more people probably showing up at open houses that aren't quite ready to sign buyer agents reps because somebody hasn't articulated their value enough yet. So this is a great opportunity going into this new situation with this these changes to be able to pick up buyers to show your value with all the things that uh, Smita uh, went through today. So um, you guys, this will be, be up for the replay tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, um, later tonight, or it may be the morning, uh, Jeff's out of town and he normally is the one who'll post those for us. But, uh, and tomorrow we're doing the connect to collaborate. And we, you know, if y'all want to mastermind a little bit more around this, come join us tomorrow, same time, same link. Um, we're just, connecting and collaborating um, on whatever topics and questions you guys have. I mean, if you have questions about this whole NAR coming up, come tomorrow because it goes in effect on Saturday. So um, thank you again so much. Smith, I'll send you the recording for it. And um, we appreciate you. Such thank great you. stuff today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.